Good day everyone, so why is Kale so good in Nilo Bloom teams? Well, there are certainly a number of misconceptions about this and I'm so happy that Jamie posted here on our Nilo mains and he tried to clear up some of these misconceptions and I think a very good reason that a lot of people think Kale is useful is because of her front-loaded Dendra application. In other words, she uses her E, she uses her Q ability and you have lots of Dendra to trigger lots of like Bountiful Core explosions but that's not really the real reason. The real reason is because of sustained dendro application and I'll explain this in just a bit but before we do so if you haven't read this post here by Jamie it's linked in the description please do read it because all I really want to do in this video is just add on to a bit uh, onto the discussion and just highlight some things like um, just some extra things that weren't mentioned so let's just talk a bit about this idea of sustained dendro application so here is really how it works. In Nilo Bloom teams, what often happens is that you want the enemies to have a consistent dendro aura on top of them. So this means that your dendro units should be the ones applying a lot of dendro onto the enemies. And why this is important is because when your hydro units use their abilities, they're going to be the ones having full bloom ownership. And because we know that when hydro interacts with dendro, you get more bountiful cores, that's precisely what's in going to lead you to getting the maximum amount of dendro cores on the field and hence the maximum amount of damage. And this is really where Kale is like so 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 deceptive because what Kale does is not only does she stabilize this, this interplay between Hydro and Dendro, what she also does in the Nila rotation is use her elemental burst which applies a lot of Dendro precisely at the point in time when Kokomi or Nilo are applying their maximum amount of Hydro. So basically Kokomi's got the jellyfish and Nilo's got the E-ring but the moment Kokomi refreshes her jellyfish she applies two instances of Hydro with her elemental burst and she can even apply another instance by using a normal attack and you've got the jellyfish on the field and you've got Nilo's E-ring. So that is just so so much Hydro. That's more than what Shinshu can do in like a second. And what's even crazy is if you now follow that up by let's say Nilo elemental burst you just have another two instances of Hydro on the field. So you can very easily see that Kale Kale's elemental burst is or the front loaded part of it is precisely used at a time when the hydro um, application is at its maximum and it's used in such a way as to balance this mix between hydro and dendro very optimally. So rather than just keep on talking let's look at a couple of practical examples. So in one of my little YouTube videos here you can see I'm fighting a little big dinosaur in the background and what I want you to notice is something very very interesting. So after my setup phase so in other words I got Vanilla's ring active and so on what you'll now notice is that the dendro aura here on the flying dinosaur is going to be consistently dendro and how do I sort of keep that on him well one of the things here you can see is that even though I've used Kale's burst already I still have this aura but where is this coming from because the combination here of Ni Nilo and Kokomi's elemental burst would have easily overtaken what little Nahida can do so this is something that I want you to to notice again very very carefully so we're going to play here and look what I'm going to do I'm going to use Kale's elemental burst but did you notice what I did there I used her elemental skill so I threw the boomerang and the boomerang is now precisely going to return at this point in time back to my sort of oops, sorry um like active character and here you can see there's a little floral ring so what happens is that I've got Nahida's E ability here the little Q ability or front loaded dendro is gone and now you can see here that my Kale is actually applying dendro onto this enemy which allows me to keep my uh, dendro aura on top of him so this is what I mean by like sustained dendro application and this is like so so good so you can see here that in the beginning I already used Kale's burst so the front loaded part is already that, that people think of is already sort of taken care of. It's precisely this E ability, this floral ring that goes, hits, applies dendro and then comes back and then keeps on periodically ticking. That is precisely what keeps Nehida 
and the dendro units or essentially in this team that's precisely what keeps them on top of the hydro units in terms of elemental application and if you manage it perfectly or you manage it like really really well you get the maximum amount of dendro cores so this is really what we mean and what i also want to add to the discussion is here is where jamie kind of said that there's a lot of portability with um, Cole's elemental skill and i think a very good example is to sort of show you here in the spiral burst of how we actually do that so you can see here i'm hitting the enemies going here with nilo and what i'm now going to do is i'm going to stand here i'm going to throw Cole's boomerang and run in the opposite direction so the skill cooldown i've got sacrificial fragments here so it doesn't matter but the skill cooldown is already ticking off but the boomerang is on the other side of the abyss and this is very very good because what it means is that i can set up my hydro here without sort of unintentionally triggering things and now you'll see here the boomerang comes back it hits this enemy it applies dendro onto him but it's now also gonna sort of wrap around kokomi and allows us to also periodically tag the enemies with dendro even further on so this is what we mean by portability you threw the skill you already activated the cooldown you ran to the other side and it's now precisely active at the point when i want to start using all of my abilities this is very much like a, a sustained way of using her skill so you can see here now we're going to swap to uh, you can see i think it's like so beautiful you can see around nahida is a little floral ring nahida is going to tag the enemies and then the floral ring is just in conjunction with nilo's ring and of course kokomi's jellyfish going to ensure that we have consistent dendro application look at that we've already taken quite a bit of like health off of the enemies so yeah that is why kole is so so good you can see the floral ring is still active on her you can see it. here's um kole here's the floral ring um its visuals aren't very clear but you can see it is still being active and there i think at this point it's kind of like nope it's still there so you can see here it's just crazy how long this thing lasts um at this point it's like completely gone but you can now understand from my perspective here at about um when did we use it we used it here at about 9.53, so they, well, we can say 9.52 for argument's sake. So on 9.52 we've had it, it comes back here at about 9.49, so that's three seconds. Here's a little floral ring and we, we're not going to use Kale in any other way, so here it is. We're now going to go here to Kale's Elemental Burst, whatever, but here's the floral ring. The floral ring is still active, there it's still active. So basically for a whole of 10 seconds we've had this E ability and it was helping with the dendro. And that is precisely what I mean with sustained dendro application. That is why Kale is so, so, so good. But yeah, but hopefully that just makes it a bit more obvious. Right, I've been rambling on for way too long. Thank you so much for watching and do check out Jamie's post and give it an upvote. Cheers.